Contracts and Recurring Invoices in WinRoot System 5. As an introduction, the Contracts and Recurring Invoices command will allow the user to create and use recurring invoices without requiring a rental module being purchased and installed in the WinRoot System 5 software. Examples of this type of invoice are a long term photocopy release, monthly alarm monitoring, postal meters, where you can record the meter readings, and vehicle or storage units. The purpose of the contract's recurring invoices command is to automate some of the tasks of creating each customer's recurring contracts. So for the course objectives, on completion of this video, the viewer will be able to create a recurring invoice template. Set recurring invoice template options. Add items to the recurring invoice template. Optionally, set up recurring invoice template for meter readings. And finally, to create recurring invoices. Over the next three slides, I'll switch back and forth between our demo software installed and our presentation here on how to create a recurring invoice template. Create a recurring invoice template invoice for each customer's contract. By definition, this invoice is set up as an E estimate type invoice, and the invoice number must be R-E-N-T-A-L, rental, in capital letters. So if you do this during the Accounts Receivable AR Utilities Contracts Recurring Invoices command, these settings are done automatically. These settings add a recurring tab to the Invoice Details window, where you would now set the template options. You could do this manually by going to New Sale, create a new estimate, and manually forcing the invoice number to rental. But this automates the process. Here are the steps. In the main navigator menu, find Air Utilities, Contract Recurring Invoices. By clicking on that, the Create Recurring Invoices report appears. I will click this in our demo here. Here is the Create Recurring Invoices window. The next step in creating a recurring invoice template is to search for and attach a customer to the template. If no customer is to be attached to the invoice, leave the search fields blank and click OK. However, if you click Cancel in the Find Customer window, this will stop the creation of the template invoice. Next, the Find Unit window will appear. In our demo, I will click New Template Invoice. We'll find a customer and attach it to the invoice. Now, the Find Unit window appears. Now, optionally, we can search for a specific unit and attach it to the template. This could be an example of a, attaching a photocopier to a particular photocopier rental type template. However, if no unit is to be attached, click OK while leaving all the search fields blank. Uh, if you click Cancel, also if it does not stop the creation of the template invoice, it does also continue on to the next tab, which is the Invoice Details window appears. And the new estimate template will display and also have a new recurring tab. Let's look at this in our demo. Let's choose a photocopier now. Here we have the Find Unit screen. I have pressed Recent, and I, have, I see below that we have the Rico Officio copier owned by this particular customer with this serial number. I'll click OK to add it to the invoice. We'll find that when we come to the invoice, be on the item screen or the unit screen here, and the unit has been attached to the invoice. And to clarify, this is the invoice template because the invoice type is E. Now, on the invoice tab, you will see the invoice number is rental. We'll also see that this invoice template has a new tab called recurring, where we will look at the details of how to set these parameters. On these next two slides, we'll look at how to set the recurring invoice template options. Number one is to select the start and end date fields of the contract. 
Located in the upper left is the start date and end date. By double clicking, I can pop open a calendar and I would like to set some regular invoices up for the next year. We'll set them up for August 1st, 2013 through to July 1st, 2014. The next step on the recurring invoice template settings is to set the active checkbox to make this template active. This is located here on the screen under active. The next option to select is to check the pre-authorized payments checkbox. If the customer has given you post-dated checks or if you will collect the customer's credit card info and bill them on a regular basis, the effect of this checkbox is to change the behavior of how the Create Recurring Invoices report will create the invoices. We will look at that further on in this demo. For our demo, I will say we have pre-authorized payments. The next area to select is the Create Dates region. Here you can set the day of the month of the recurring invoices. There's a button here to create the dates for the invoices, which will appear in the grid, and they can be overridden in the date column of the grid. I would like the invoices to be created on the first day of each month. I'll hit the Create Dates button, and the dates appear here. If you have a particular invoice template set up where you want it to happen more than once a month, what you would do is manually edit the dates here. If you wanted it on the 1st and the 16th of every month, you could do 8 slash 1 2013, 8 slash 16 2013, or whatever date format you have for your particular computer, and work your way down the date column grid. By referring back to our slides, we can see that that's the date invoice region where we can edit the dates. Once an invoice has actually been created via the Create Recurring Invoices report, you'll see a check mark appearing in the leftmost cell of the grid and the invoice number appearing in the invoice cell. So if we were to go through the steps, which we will just a bit later on, we will see, for example, the August 1st, we will see a check mark appear in the left-hand column to the left of it and the actual invoice number of the re the actual recurred invoice in the right-hand column of that grid. And the next area of this recurring tab is the calendar region. Once you've entered or created dates, the calendar will display the date of the highlighted line of the grid. We can see that by clicking August 1st. We see August 1st is highlighted over here. If we click October 1st, we'll see October 1st over here. Now we can't use the calendar box to change the actual setting. It's just a read-only view of, user-friendly view of the date selected in the middle grid. The next step of creating the recurring invoice template is to add the items. So you'd add the inventory items that you're invoicing in this contract. You'll add these onto the template invoice in the items tab as per the normal process. Do note that a customer could have many contracts on the go for various items. You don't need to include all the items on one contract template. You can have multiple contract templates set up for the customer. And the items that are added to the template are billed when the invoices are created. Normally these are non-inventory parts. For our demo, I'll add a photocopier rental. This is the monthly rental fee, which is $110 per month. The next option you have is you can set up this template for meter readings. So if you've attached a unit to the invoice, as I have in this particular demo, you can add items to the template with a quantity of zero. Now, if you set the order quantity greater than zero, the meter reading uses that line first up to the order quantity specified during our Create uh, Recurring Invoices report. And after that, use the, the next line. You'll see this set up in our demo. 
I'll add the items. I'll use the free ones first, add them. Now I've added two items underneath the rental fee. We have some free copies that could be included with the rental and copies to be paid for. As noted in the PowerPoint, we'll set our ship quantities to zero. And we will set our free copies to a thousand. So the first thousand copies are free. After that, they'll be two cents a piece. And just back to our PowerPoint to show that, if you set the order quantity greater than zero, the meter reading uses that line first, which is the line of a thousand copies. Up until we hit a thousand, then it moves on to the next line. The next four slides will explain how to actually create the contact recurring invoices. The first step is to find the AR Utilities contact recurring invoices in the Navigator menu as we had before. This was open and I closed it, so I'll reopen it. The first area to select on here is to select a date range for the invoices you wish to view and or create. There is a note here in the help topic documentation that the range of the report should not span multiple book months, as this can cause posting errors in the created invoice. So in that case, I will do invoices for August. August 1st to August 31st, and we'll have a view of what invoices are out there for that particular time period. So now you have two more options on this page. Under Invoice Type, we have our accounts receivable invoices drop down arrow and for pre authorized invoices drop down arrow. Now you'll be clicking the for invoices drop down arrow and selecting the error invoice type you wish to create. This will create an invoice of that selected type for all the recurring invoice templates that do not have their pre authorized payments checkbox checked. To explain that a little bit further, You would alternately click the four pre-authorized invoices drop-down arrow and select the recurring pre-authorized invoice type you wish to create. This will create invoices for the selected type of all recurring templated invoices that do have their pre-authorized payments checkbox checked. So in our case, we had just finished creating an invoice template that had their pre-authorized payments checkbox checked. So that's the type of invoice that we're going to be creating in this next screen here. And we'll return to the demo and set up how I would like those invoices to be fulfilled. Via an accounts receivable charge, charge it right to their account. Uh, cash invoice, which is an invoice that has to be tendered right away if you have the pre authorized checks or pre authorized credit cards. And finally, a work order where you have to do the work to complete them. In our demo here, I will choose cash as the invoice type that I'd like to create. There are two more options on this report setup. The first is a checkbox here located under options called print invoices after being created. This will automatically jump right into printing them after you, after you create them from this report. Next option is show all contracts. This will display them in the next screen whether or not they're checked as active or not. In our case, we just created a, an estimate template that was active. So I can just leave this show all contracts option unchecked. And I'm also not going to jump right into printing the invoices after we create them in the next screen here. So they are unchecked. And the next action we like to do is click the View Invoices button. Here the focus is going to switch to the Report tab of the, this particular report window. 
it'll list all the relevant information about the contract recurring invoices that we're that we're creating. View invoices here in our demo. We'll see here in the bill date field that August 1st, 2013 is the particular bill that it wants to create. Active and pre-authorized are fields that are pre-filled out for us based on the recurring template that we had created earlier. There's a create column here. We would clear any check marks in front of any invoice that we do not want created so that if there were a number of invoices in this list, I could uncheck them. But in this case, I do want to check them because I want to create an invoice for this one. And number nine, optionally, we can set our start meter and end meter. In this case, this is a photocopier where it does actually have a meter on it. So that is appropriate for this type of an invoice. What I like to do in this case is start the meter off with a small value, say perhaps 500 copies for the month. This will be under the 2,000 copies or the 1,000 copies that would be free for the month. 500 tab. Then we'll see that 500 will be the metered amount that we'll be charging. And number 10, click create invoices to generate the specified accounts to see will invoice types or the, in this case, prepaid invoice types for the selected invoices in the report. I shall click create invoices. I'm asked to confirm create recurring invoices. Yes. And the screen switches from a check mark in the create column to a dollar value in the create column. This indicates that there has been an invoice created. What I'll do is I'll double click the bill date field here. Be careful of the field you double click. If I double clicked the Officio SBC240SF, I would double click myself into the unit record, which wouldn't be useful. If I double clicked the customer name, I would jump into the customer record, which wouldn't be useful. If I clicked in the start meter or end meter, I would be changing the value of the meter, which wouldn't be useful after the fact here. So the bill date field is the appropriate field to double click. Yes, I will edit that invoice. And here we have the basic charge here we have it's already a cash invoice the monthly rental fee is one at 110 dollars i have 500 copies at zero dollars and zero copies at two cents because i was under the 1000 free copies in this particular case uh, pre-authorized checks were set up for this customer we didn't have any mastercard or visa on file and we billed the right amount as a tender now I'll exit that print. I will create another recurring invoice. I will turn to my settings tab. This time we'll do September's invoice. I'll view the invoices here. And here again we have the same recurring invoice that we're going to create. In this case, the bill date will be September 1st. I would like this time to show you what happens if you enter in a meter that jumps into the next line. If I entered 3,000, that would still be within the 1,000 free copies. So I'll enter 3,500 tab. In that case, we see we're going to charge 1,500 copies this time. I'll click the Create Invoices button. Yes to confirm. And in this case, you'll see something different. The message that pops up says we've created an unbalanced transaction. Let's double click the invoice to see why. Once the invoice is open and edited, we say yes to edit. We'll see that the same, the monthly rental fee has been charged, the thousand free copies have been charged, and 500 copies at two cents a piece have been charged. Grand total of $126 should be the total bill. However, the system automatically paid only $115.50. That is based on 
the base price with the first line, the monthly rental fee, and the tax on that. If we look on the tender tab, we'll see that 11550 has been uh, received as a tender, but we're short some money. Short 1050. In this case, I should mark down the appropriate tender to make up the difference. And the reason for this may be that the customer may have, in this case, issued pre-authorized checks, pan, and they're already pre-written. So in that case, we'll be asking the customer for extra money to make up the difference. Perhaps they came in and paid you with their debit card. I can double-click the debit card and make up the 1050 difference. I can now save and print that off, or in our case, exit without print to save the paper. And once again, a dollar sign has appeared in the left-hand column to indicate a successful invoice completion. And mentioned, number 11 was to double-click to drill down into any created invoice as we have done. Thank you for viewing this video. You will now be able to effectively and efficiently use the Contracts Recurring Invoices command in System 5. Connect with us online.